Hello and welcome to part one of Forest Falls, a new three-part series. So uh, today was block-in and what that means is I mapped out where all the major value color uh, colors would be and uh, mapped that out. Now pay attention that there's a big contrast between this dark tree in the upper and the falls on the bottom because that really uh, creates drama when you have a dark dark and a light light together. So we wanted to make sure we got that and as well as all the surrounding uh, uh, shapes and colors that uh, support those two main drama points and that's where I really want our viewers eye to go to first so that's a very important position to put that stuff and to get those values right. All right, so uh, tomorrow we will get into a little bit more balance, you know, what has to be darker, what has to be lighter, and um, get those trees in. Right now, I don't have very good trees in, so we'll get that tomorrow. You'll see the struggles I had with it <laughs> in this session. All right, thanks for coming by. I'm George Call, and uh, get outside and paint. Not today, it's many degrees below zero, and it's snowing, it's January. But uh, when you can, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, let's start painting. Bye. Hey, hello and uh, welcome to a new series called Forest Falls. And um, today is part one and uh, I'm working on a 9 by 15, I think. And... Um, I work on this stuff that's, um, uh, I have canvas uh, glued onto to uh, gator board. And I like gator board because it doesn't uh, warp. And that's why I like it. And it's real strong, you know, you're, when you're working with your knife, it won't puncture. But uh, nice stuff. Expensive though, you know, gator board is not cheap. Well, today is uh, part one, and I want to try to, in the next 30 minutes, or close to it, cover this canvas with uh, value colors representing where the major, you know, uh, interest points are going to be. And of course, I think the major one that everybody looks at is the falls, which is somewhere below center here. But also, I want to be looking at the darks here and here and over in this area. So, let me get some idea of where things should be and uh, we'll get started. A paper towel and my trusty mixing knife. That is my connoisseur. Here's my mixing knife. And as you notice, I've got some paint on the bottom of it. So I'm going to clean that off. It should be as clean as possible on the bottom. Alright, so we're going to get some blue and some gray and some light gray. And now I'm going to get a little bit of transparent oxide red. And I mix my paints thoroughly. And I'm going to be drawing with a worn out rosemary 2025 number 2. Just a touch of turp. Not too much. So I want to try to figure out a horizon line, and I, not even a horizon line, but it's a dividing line. Somewhere down here is the, where the falls start falling off of the, uh, the, you know, from one level to the next. But I'm going to make it a little bit taller, I think. I don't want it to be going downhill. I think the reference, I had to level it, and if it's a little bit tilted to one side, you might say, try to level it. I did that with my editing this morning. I hope the ones you got are. I want to be, get some good darks up in here. The falls are going to be here. There's a lot of stuff going on over here in the way of darks. And the falls are actually kind of narrow here. There's some logs. And then there's some 
nice aspen here. And big dark over here. And nice aspen tree right here. You know, maybe here. And there's some nice honking darks down here. Kind of going this way and this way. All right. <clears throat> Let me get back and check the judgment I've made on where those shapes are going to be. Okay. I think I'm okay. So let's invest in moving on into the next stage. I'm a little low on Amsol, so I have to refurnish, replenish my stuff over here on the left, right, and make a bigger mixing pile. And this time I'm going to go through and throw in more blue, a little bit of iridium, and transparent oxide brown, a little bit more ultra blue, blue. And I threw in a little bit of yellow ochre to start giving it that slightly pine color look. And this time I'm going to go with a bigger brush. It's a 2025 number 6. I'm going to get a little gamsol in it to loosen it up from... I haven't painted since yesterday. Today is a Monday and it's, it's January 15th and it is snowing outside and blowing. It's the day of the Iowa caucus. Those poor people in Iowa, jeez, they've got to get out of this stuff. At least I'm not in Iowa today going to a caucus. And as you can see, I'm just going to move some darts over here as best I can to give some indication of. And this comes over quite a ways, over the top of this water. And what that does is really, this dark dramatizes how, you know, you have a big dark against a big light. And that's kind of the, one of the neat things about this reference. I've painted this reference before. And I just want to keep painting it because it's one of my favorite places in the park, Rocky Mountain National Park. I'm going to add a little bit more ultra to this. Ultra, blue. A little bit more brown. More blue. Just a touch of Gamsol. And I am going to go Wuka. Wuka and get these darks in down here. And now there's, I think, a dark coming here, and another one here. And now I want to try to figure out waterfall here. I'm going to say to here. And then we're going to have some, these guys here. All right, I'm talking to myself because I'm trying to figure out where to put these darks. I'm going to go a little bit more blue. And I am going to start here. I'm trying to train myself to squint more. See exactly where the the foundation shapes are when I when I'm outside or when I'm in the studio looking at a reference or one of my field sketches I really try to pay attention to where all these shapes are going to be well this studio cat is leaving the studio going to the back of the barn all right suit yourself when I don't pay attention to her she gets upset and leaves well, I get that, you know. Now 
Now I think this is tree, so there's some dark right up in here and other side. And there's some other darks over in this area here. Okay, so I guess what you can say I'm doing is mapping out my design. Now, you notice I put these in really thick, well, I'm not thick in paint, but thoroughly, I mean, to where there's no canvas peeking through. But if you look over here, see that spot, and these spots here, and these spots here, I just go over them very lightly where you can see where the canvas is coming through. I mean, there's still a dark here, but it is not as dark as these guys right up in here. There's a secondary falls. This would be A, B, and C. Um, this is the main guy, A. So let's just start getting some more yellow ochre in this mixture. Yellow ochre. And uh, let me get some um, permanent green in this mixture. Permanent green, light gray, permanent green, and we have kind of a, just a nice undertone color here. I'll try it out over here. It works nicely. I think I'll make it a little lighter. A little bit more light gray. And work on that over in this area. There's some sky holes coming through here. I'm going to get a little bit more light gray in here and a little bit more permanent green. And I know you see yellows back there, you see all kinds of things, but for now we are just going to come in here and get a nice subtle color in here. What I call it is my foundation or background colors. Some of that over here too. And here. And here. And some right up in here. So if you understand this process is you're basically just putting these nice value colors down in the general neighborhood of where they should be. I know a lot of this comes over and lightens this thing up and I'll dab some of that to soften it. All right. I see some gray, getting some light gray, dark gray, and I'm going to see back in here there's some grays, rock I guess, and I'll put some up in here too. Okay, now I'm going to get some yellows. Cad yellow, cad yellow, gray, and a touch of white. And I see some of that going on up in this area, and up in this area. And there's a little bit of rust going on in a few places, so I'll get some gray. And a little bit of blue to knock that down. Yeah, 
Yeah, this particular color that uh, I call rust is light oxide red by Rembrandt 339. It's very strong. It's opaque. It's very strong. see some of that in various places down below. Alright, let's take these greens right down to the surface of the water here and fill that in. Sorry, my fan came on in the other room. So you might have some background noise for a few minutes. All right, I'm getting back to look at it. So you're saying, when are you going to get these darn trees in? They're really important. I get that. So let me do a few more fill-ins, and I'll be ready to do that. So I think the trees are going to come in here somewhere. And let's get a little bit more green, permanent, I think over here and here. I don't want to lose these nice darks I have. I may have lost too much of it. So I'm going back to a blue, transparent oxide red, blue. Touch of viridian, and I will put a little bit more viridian in there. And a touch of dark gray. Okay. Yeah. I like the little bit more rusty blue I have in this mixture to help just. some of that brown stuff I have in there. All right, the moment of truth. Let's get moving on with trees here, okay? So I'm going to make a two-part process in doing that. One is figuring out where they're going to be with one brush, and then the other one is uh, kind of an eraser brush to erase that stuff from underneath. Okay. So let's figure out where things are going to be first. So we need some sort of a, what is this, a yellow green? So I got some Naples, I've got some Cad Yellow. And I've got some permanent green, and I got too much permanent green. So I'm going to knock that down with some white. And I think we have a, something that goes like this, and over here, and then down in here. We'll get some more light in that thing. It's too dark. More gray. Or Naples, please. Naples. So this is my design here with this fella. And then we have some bigger guys right up in here. And fella here. We have a big cross member coming up here. And we have a continuation of this guy up in here somewhere. 
And we have some nasty logs, I think, down in here somewhere. And this guy's got some rust in it. Okay, so let's um, see what we can do about eliminating some of that paint and get a little lighter. And accent the trees more. That process. So, I want to get something that's a brush that uh, can hold a little bit of Gamsol in it. Let me see if this one is able to do that. Nope. I think we need something a little stiffer than that. Stiff is what we need. There we go. So this time I've got a 2025 and let's see, I put a little Gamsol on it. See if it can do some erasing for me. And as you can see, nothing's working. So I'm going to go back to the softer brushes. And I'm going back to a uh, 279. Long flat with some gamsol in it. Let's see. Well, I'm going to be persistent and see if I can do it. Otherwise, I just have to wait till tomorrow until things get a little stiffer and paint on top of the paint. That's not working for me today. Nope. Try a little bit bigger, softer brush and work on the base area. So I've been showing you a lot of techniques that don't work. Well, at least I know where my trees are going to be, and I have to work on it tomorrow when the paint's going to be a little stiffer. Just not coming out. All right. Let's keep moving along. Let me check my time. All right. I want to get into the uh, waterfall here and make a two-tone. One's kind of a gray. Let me pick this stuff up. Put it off to the side. These guys probably need to go. And let me get my palette a little cleaner. Like that. So we have a light, light, and kind of a, a grayish, uh, maybe some green. So I'm going to take a little bit of this color that we threw everything together on. I'm going to put a touch of royal in it, royal blue. And it doesn't look like much of a color unless you put a white next to it. And then it really shows up. So now what I want to do is get the upper part on. So as you can see, this stuff is kind of kind of falls into more blue, more royal. This is royal blue. Maybe too much. No, after I mix it, it's not too bad. And here we go. There's so many paintings out there of waterfalls, and it's all about the waterfalls. And I like to say it's more than just the waterfalls. That's why I do all this surrounding stuff. I'll put 
put some water behind him. And one's going to go pretty low. And then there's going to be some of this color here. And then comes our next mixture. I'm cleaning my brush. And we're going to make a white with a touch of Naples. And a touch of Viridian. And you can see there's a contrast there between what's coming down and what's down below. And then I'm going to put a streak or two of white in here. And that gives it some movement. And I think there's a, there's a good one right in here. All right, hoo, hoo, hoo. that's a good start. I'm going to put a little bit of sky in since I have this white. And just a few streaks of it. And that will be all that it needs to say for now. What I'm hoping to do after I finish all this is to lighten up the background, make it look like sunlight in the back. I'll experiment with that and see if that works. Otherwise, we're bringing this to an end because we've covered the whole thing with paint. But I do have some yellow left, I think so. I think I'm there, but you're going to see. I'm doing fine on time. So there's this big old aspen tree over here. Let me get a little bit more blue in him. He's kind of subtle over here. Good guy. And there's a bunch of little trees over in here too. But they're going to have to wait, I think. Okay. That is a block in. Thank you so much for coming by for part one of uh, Forest Falls, and I'll see you next in part two. All right. Bye-bye.